Hey folks, Tristan here. Uh, this is my response video to the Ask Me Anything video, which was in my channel about uh, a week ago or so. And I apologize for the quality of this video. I am recording it again on the iPad with the YouTube Capture app. And I'm using this as a microphone plugged into the iPad, so I think the sound will be a lot better. Uh, and it's real early on a Sunday morning. I just kind of rolled out of bed, so I look kind of like a mess. Uh, but I figured I'd just do this kind of impromptu video and sort of ask some of your questions. So um, yeah, if you want to see the original video, you can go back in my channel and, and check it out. Check it out. But um, I'll go ahead and answer some of these questions here. Uh, let's see here, I have to first find them. Um, I'm not gonna answer all of the questions, so I apologize if your question doesn't get answered, but um, I will try to do my best here. All right, first question, Steve Oman 16 asks, if you had to get rid of all of your electronic stuff, what's the three things that you would keep and why? Kind of a tough question, but um, the iPhone would definitely be in there. Uh, probably one of my cameras would be in there. Um, and let's see, what would be the third thing? Uh, it's kind of hard to choose. Um, let's see, iPhone camera and... Uh, hmm can't really think of the third thing. Um, I guess I'd have to say maybe my, one of my computers, I guess. Um, I just feel like with those things, with those tools, um, I can really do a lot, especially with the iPhone. Um, I can, you know, have contact uh, to the world and get my entertainment that way and, and stuff like that. So I think of all those, the iPhone would certainly be the one that I, wouldn't, I would want to give up least. Uh, good question, though. Okay, going down the list here. Uh, Mr. Brown Sound asks, you've reviewed some very high-end audio headsets. What kind of headset would you recommend for a under $600 US um, headphone plus an appropriate DAC and amp uh, for classical and electronic music? That's also sort of a good question. Um, Classical and electronic music don't necessarily go uh, very well together in terms of having one headphone that will sound good on both. Uh, you know, with electronic music, you tend to want a lot of bass, um, but also with good highs and good separation. With classical music, you don't necessarily need a bassy headphone. You just want a real good separation and also good highs. Uh, I think the headphone that immediately comes to mind for me for both classical and electronic music would be the Sennheiser HD 600s. Uh, I think those are a very good sort of headphone for, good overall headphone for both of those types of music. Um, they don't have real pounding bass for electronic music or anything like that, but they still do sound pretty good for rock. You might also check out the HD 650s. Uh, there's a little bit of a difference there. Just do a search and find out what the differences are in terms of the sound signature, but they're very similar headphones uh, in terms of the form factor and stuff. And, and the sound is a little bit different on each. Uh, in terms of a DAC and amp, um, that sort of also depends on whether you want to go portable or whether you want a home DAC or amp. But um, something like the V-Mode Vamp Versa might be pretty nice. Um, that's a portable. Uh, and then also you might look at um, Audio Engine has a, a DAC and headphone amplifier as well. I can't remember the model number. Um, I think it might be D1. You might check that one out. For the price, I've heard pretty good things about about that. So yeah, check those out. Uh, let's see here. Next question. 555 Gear asks, as another channel that reviews quite a variety of gear and topics, I'm interested in hearing about what was your favorite video that you've made and which one are you the least happy with and why? If you've made any additional YouTube, if you have any additional YouTuber advice, that would be great too. Thanks. Man, tough questions. Uh, these are really hard for me to answer, actually. I can't really say that I necessarily have a favorite video of mine. I mean, I like them all. Uh, it's, it's, it's really hard to choose because I don't actually do videos if I don't like them or if I shoot a video and I don't like it, I probably won't post it. But, you know, in general, uh, I like all the videos that I do just because I'm telling people stuff that I want to tell people. And, you know, I think I have something to say with each video, basically. So, um it's kind of hard for me to choose one video that I like the best or one video that I like the worst. Uh, and you know, also th things go in phases, you know, like sometimes I'm interested in 
certain things and I'll do a whole bunch of videos on that thing, for instance, watches or whatever. Uh, and then I'll stop for a while and get interested in something else and, um, and do videos on, on, on that other topic. So I can't really answer that question because um, I don't really necessarily have a favorite video. Certainly, I, uh, I sometimes look at the analytics and the most popular videos of mine um, I tend to like. <laughs> so I'd have to say like the most popular ones are, are uh, some, of my, some of my favorites. And basically the ones that reach people and um, help people are actually the ones that I like the most. Because that's really what I started doing YouTube for originally is just um, to help people. And, you know, like I had opinions about certain things, products or whatever, that I thought uh, wasn't really getting out there and like people needed to know certain things or whatever. And, um, you know, I just thought it would help other people. So that's how I originally started. That's why I originally started doing YouTube. And so I'd have to say the videos where people find them real helpful or whatever, uh, are the ones that are my favorite. Uh, Sergio Enriquez asks, what do you do for a living? Um, well, that's another sort of tricky question because I have more than one thing that I do for a living. My main day job, uh, I work in tech, technical and help desk support for an online uh, photo printing and uh, sharing company. Um, so that's my day job. But then I also do um, videos for um, local companies uh, like product demo videos that you don't see here on my YouTube channel. I just do them uh, for the local companies. I do like um, videos for um, small companies for their websites and things like that, whether it be um, demoing their products um, like bags and cases and stuff like that or their clothes. And then I also do photography as well, still photography. Um, so I definitely have a few different streams of income and I'd have to say like uh, YouTube also helps with that a little bit. I mean, I don't make tons of money like with Google ads doing YouTube, but um, you know, it is a little bit. So that certainly helps as well. Um, so this channel is actually, I kind of consider it a part-time job as well. So I don't know if I have to say, you know, I keep pretty busy. I've got basically that's like four things, four, four, um, four jobs for me basically. Um, but yeah, my main job again is the technical and help desk support uh, job that I do. That's my main day job. And then in the, in the past, I, you know, I've got, I've had a lot of jobs in the past, uh, in my life, but, um, my background basically is in media communications and filmmaking. And I've worked for Disney and Lucasfilm and, um, uh, companies such as that in the past. So that's sort of my, my background. Thanks for the question. Going to the next question here. Let's see. All right. Yeah, I have another question from Henry, which is the same question that I just answered. What was my job? Uh, okay. Some of these questions are kind of stupid and just dumb, lame questions that I'm skipping over and not answering. Um, let's see. All right. Uh, Ethan Owens asks, do you regularly or have you ever been sent anything from a company to review? If not, I think you could start trying to see what you could get. I think your videos are well made and it would be cool to see you grow your channel. Thanks for the videos. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ethan. Um, I'd have to say some of the stuff that I review in my channel have been sent to me for review, but I'd have to say most of the stuff, at least so far, has been stuff that I've purchased myself. And part of the thing that I want to do is um, in some ways monetize my life a little bit. Um, if I buy something, um, if I review it on my channel, um, and people like the video, you know, I can get uh, some little bit of Google ad revenue from that. And um, that's something that I try to do. And also I can help people. Like I like to share my opinions. I've always been a person that's like electronics and gadgets and stuff and telling other people about them, telling, telling other people about them. So uh, a lot of stuff that I buy, I just want to share uh, with other people, like why I bought it, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. And so... Um, I'd have to say the, the majority of stuff in my channel is stuff that I've actually purchased. Although I have to say I do sell a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm just that kind of person. I buy and sell a lot of stuff. So sometimes I will purchase something, review it, and then a month or two later, it'll be gone. I'll, I would have sold it. Um, you know, I'm just always buying and selling stuff. So that's the other thing. A lot of the stuff that you see in my channel, I don't still own. Uh, and then, you know, a small, a small amount of it um, does get sent to me. A lot of the iPad and iPhone cases and stuff have been sent to me by companies and stuff for review um, in my channel. So I'm certainly open to that. If there are any companies out there that would like to send me stuff to review, please contact me and I would be happy to consider that. Thanks for the question, Ethan.
Okay, um, going through here, some more questions. Um, 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 Car, I think that's his name. Amu um, Car Shandan. Amu um, Car Shandan asks, when can we expect an SR009 review? For those of you who don't know, the SR009 is uh, an expensive headphone. Um, I believe made by Stax, right? That's a Stax headphone. Uh, I don't have the money to go and purchase that to review for this channel, but certainly if someone would want to send me the SR009, I'd be happy to review it. Thanks for the question. Very cool, Alan asks, how are you so rich and how can I be rich like you? <laughs> First of all, um, this type sort of ties in with one of my previous answers. Um, it may seem like I buy a lot of stuff and I'm rich and all that, but uh, it's not really the case. Again, I buy and sell a lot of stuff, um, so a lot of stuff passes through my life or whatever. Um, and some of the stuff also gets sent to me for review as well. So that's something you know, that you should take into consideration. Um, but how can I be rich like you? Um, I do have to say that uh, I generally think I'm pretty smart with my money. And I don't believe in debt. I save you know, what I would consider to be a lot. And I invest well as well. So I think that I'm generally fairly smart with my investments and my savings. Um, and I don't believe in debt. So... That's sort of my philosophy on how, how I do things. Um, and then in investments, of course, it goes without saying buy low and sell high. And um, that's just how I do it. Next question. All right, from Wrath Vengeance. Do you think Archie Luxury is a tosser or just a guy putting on a show for laughs? Personally, I get a kick out of him. As for you, dot, dot, dot. My question would be, have you ever regretted a watch purchase? And if so, which one? Well, for those of you who don't know, Archie Luxury is this guy who has a YouTube channel and posts like five videos a day or something on watches and, and stuff like that. And um, I don't know, it's sort of an interesting because he, I think he's sort of a troll, but that's what he what he goes on, you know. Um, uh, he's You just have to see his channel to understand what I'm talking about. But um, I don't really take him very, that seriously, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I don't know much about them, but anyway. Uh, let's see. Have you ever regretted a watch purchase? And if so, which one? Probably not. I haven't really regretted a watch purchase because I tend to just buy watches that I like. And also, the other thing is on anything that I buy, I try not to buy it unless I think I can sell it for the same or more money. So if I've sold a watch, I haven't really lost money on it. Okay, next question is from Hi Fi Guy 528 he says, I love your videos. What do you do for a living? Do you still have all the audio gear you showed? I've pretty much answered that one already um, in terms of what I do for a living. And then also, do you, do you have all the audio gear you showed? No, I, I don't have a lot of the audio gear that I've showed on my channel. Um, a lot of that has since been sold. So I just keep, you know, the gear that I'm interested in uh, keeping, basically, or using currently. So, yeah, no, I, I don't have everything that... Um, that I have in my channel, especially like a lot of the headphones and stuff. Some of them were sent to me for review. Some of them I have just bought and sold um, after keeping them for a while and getting something better, uh, you know, down the line. Because, you know, as time goes on, different technology comes out and uh, what might be the highest rated headphone one in, you know, a year later may not be my favorite anymore after a new one comes out, stuff like that. So, um, Hobo3003 asks, I love all the watches and shoes you buy. Have you ever got into buying and wearing stylish hats? I have to say no, I haven't. Um, I'm just not really that much of a hat person. Uh, I do have a couple of caps and like um, some skull cap type hats, like knitted hats and stuff like that, but I hardly ever wear them. All right, D. Moose asks, when on God's green earth will you make a video of you doing shoe cleaning? Yeah, I keep meaning to do that. Um, but I keep my shoes fairly clean as is. So it's real hard for me to get one dirty enough to actually merit actually doing a whole video on like the whole shoe cleaning process. But that is something that's on my list. And I, I do want to do a video where I show like myself uh, what kind of cleaning, conditioning and polishing some shoes. Um, so yeah, that, thanks for the reminder. I'll have to do that uh, you know, in an upcoming video fairly soon because it's certainly on my to-do list. All right, some of these questions are sort of along the same lines of ones that I've answered 
already. Like, for instance, Mr. Gen 909 asks a very similar question I've already answered, so I don't necessarily need to repeat that. All right, here's one. Square one, four, two, four, two. Is there a Mrs. Photo Tristan? And if so, what do they think of your YouTube channel and technical expertise? Uh, no, there is not. Uh, I am currently single. So if there are any women out there watching that may be interested, uh, <laughs> go ahead and contact me if you're in my area, the San Francisco Bay Area, and we can chat. Um, yeah, I'm not currently seeing anyone. So thanks for the question. Okay, and new... 231 asks, what is your nationality? American. Wilson Cruz asks, how are some of the Alden boots, Cordovan especially, holding up? Are there any scuffs that you had to fix and how do you do it? They're holding up pretty well, but I have to say I don't wear them that often. Um, a lot of the work that I do is from home, so I'm not having to wear like my nice you know, Alden shoes out that much. Uh, but yeah, they do get scuffed uh, when you wear them out, and that's just natural. Uh, the way to remove scuffs is usually just by brushing them pretty thoroughly and and um, maybe buffing them with a buffing cloth a little bit. And if they're super scuffed, uh, go back on my channel because I have a video where I show how to remove scuffs, or at least how to you know mostly remove, remove them using a deer bone. That's for uh, shell cordovan, shell cordovan shoes. So um, search my channel for that. Uh, I think it's called something like polishing shell cordovan with a deer bone or something like that. That helps you remove scuffs from shell cordovan and also works on regular leather as well. So um, that's how to do that. Uh, Henry asks, have you been married or in a serious relationship before? Yes. All right. Um, I'm going to keep going down the list here. What are the um, uh, bell... Apple One, Bell APL One asks, what are the best running shoes? I'm sorry, I can't tell you. Uh, I'm not really much of a runner myself, so I don't really know. Um, I do have some you know, sneakers and tennis shoes and stuff like that, but I, I really couldn't tell you what the best uh, um, running shoes are. All right, I think we're almost done. Um, keep going down the list here. All right, Nick, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. It's a, it looks like Kuz, Kuzmarski, Kuz, Kuzgmarski. Uh, he asks, what Mac do you run or what's your main computer? I run a Mac Pro from 2010, which I've upgraded the video card on it so that I can run the latest version of Final Cut Pro. And um, it's been going good ever since I bought it in 2010. And it's actually still pretty good. It's not real slow or anything. Um, so it's lasted a nice long time and I'm, I've been very pretty happy with it in general so that's my main computer um, but then I also have like a MacBook Air as well that I use you know as the as a laptop occasionally as well um, and you know I would imagine within probably the next three years I'd probably um, be up for getting a new main computer but I don't know what I would get yet it would certainly be a Mac but I don't know uh, what model all right um, last question X Factory CRL125 Racer X asks, I have a question about how do you get lossless files onto your iPod? That's a pretty good question, and actually uh, iTunes can do it. iTunes has a choice uh, in the preferences. I, I, don't, I don't have it in front of me here, but if you go to the settings in iTunes, uh, there's an import choice to import Apple lossless so that when you put in a CD, for instance, uh, instead of doing it in the iTunes format uh, or the iTunes Plus format, which is AAC, um, it'll actually do it in the Apple lossless format and those Apple lossless files can then be synced to your iPod because the iPod is compatible with Apple lossless. So that's the way I do it. Um, just use iTunes and just make sure that uh, you are ripping your CDs in the Apple lossless format and then uh, those can transfer fine over to your iPod or iPhone. Keep in mind the files are a lot larger so uh, they will take up more space on your iPod or iPhone. And also they take a little bit more battery power when you're playing them as well. So that uh, you know, will affect uh, the performance a little bit on your, um, on your portable device, but it's worth it. The sound quality, in my opinion, is a lot better. Now, of course, it's gonna depend on your rig, your portable rig. Um, you know, If you don't have really nice headphones and perhaps a portable amplifier, you may not notice it. And the iTunes Plus files are just fine. A lot of times what I do is I have both. I have um, I rip the CD to both formats 
and then like on my iPhone when I want to travel real light I just play iTunes plus uh, format um, with just headphones or earbuds or whatever plugged directly into it um, then when I want to listen more critically I'll have uh, my rig where I have a portable amp and I play the losses files on my iPod with that um, so there's a couple different ways you know that you could do that uh, the other thing is if you're buying music from the iTunes store, they don't offer the lossless files. So you just uh, are pretty much stuck with the iTunes Plus. I don't really buy music from the iTunes store because of that. I usually tend to buy CDs because I just want the best quality or at least better quality than the iTunes Plus. So um, that's the way I do things. I just buy, I usually buy CDs and then I just rip them in the Apple lossless format uh, within iTunes. All right, well, thanks everyone for the questions, and I'll probably do another one of these in a few months or something where you can ask me more questions. And then as always, on any of my videos, you can always ask questions about the topic of the video, and I'm usually pretty happy to answer them. So uh, this video has been going on 22 minutes now, a little bit long, uh, but hopefully um, you enjoyed these answers. And I'd like to thank all of the people who submitted questions and everyone for being a subscriber to my channel. I really appreciate it. And if you could like and share this video, that really helps me out a lot as well uh, in terms of getting the word out about my channel. I mean, if you find my channel entertaining, if you find it helpful, uh, and if you find it informative, I would really appreciate you, know, you liking and sharing my videos. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Take care, everyone.